models simplify things. You can write a sentence or read a paragraph. How many of you read your textbooks and like by the second sentence you're like, check out, woohoo, I'm done. Yeah. So this is, but how many when you guys did this, act, um, this exercise got a huge picture? Like your mind went, ooh, I get it, right? How many had this experience with these exercises? I know I did. So it's a, it's, a, it's a picture written with words, but it's done in a way to open your perception of how you see things. And so you see how you see things. Um, so how would you, do, what, look at these different models. What are they doing? Somebody. Come on, quick, quick, quick. We got time. We don't have much time. What's us a mental no model of? What's us a picture of? Poverty. Poverty. Oh, what about poverty? Is this what poverty really is? What is this? What we see. Like challenges they face. Good, good. This was your original perception, right? Okay. What's this? The position of middle class. Middle class. Okay. This is your perception at the beginning of the class, right? Right. Okay. This one's not very finished because we don't really understand it that well, but it's. What is this one? New money. And what does that mean? Does that mean I found some money? Woo, woo, woo. It's new. It's it just you a made your own money. Cool. Okay. Good. Okay. What's this? Oh, money. What's that mean? It needs to be recycled? Generational money. Ah, okay. And what's this? Those are words we learn as we go. Is that a fancy car? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, click, got it on? Good. Oh, am I on? No, because I unplugged it. You weren't on. If I want to, I want what? Get right. it all the way to the side. Okay. I am going to do this one time and one time only because I love Professor View. But you're not going to see this again. And if anybody calls, says, oh, I know her, she's a da-da-da-da-da, I'm going to call you a liar. So, this is the only time this is coming out. She's letting me film her. I'm not sure I want this film, but... Um, oh, yeah. Um, yes. yes. No, I have to stop. Sorry. Hold on. I'll, I'll tell you okay. just a minute. Shh. Just a minute. No, this is a, this is so exciting, Emily, because she never does this. I've shamed her into it. I yeah, he has. Well, she I'm going. On me that you just can't really get right. I'm going to do this for a reason. So. It actually goes along with that. Yes, it does. Yep, it sure does. Um, 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 and then the two that I'm working on now. Okay, real quick, if somebody comes up to you and says, these are the letters behind my name. I have three undergraduates, two graduate degrees, three specialized certifications, and I'm working on others. What is, that, what is your immediate thought about that person? Just something comes to your head. I like school way too much, okay. Smart, thank you. Professional student. Doesn't have to work for a living, makes a lot of money. Woohoo! A lot of debt. You know, that's, a, that's important because. Okay, a lot of debt. Poor. You see debt, okay. What else? Rich. Okay. We've got someone with a good job. So we've seen we've seen debt, but making a lot of money. I've heard smart. Anything else? Hard worker, okay. 
And think about this, guys. These, these are a lot of the credentials that your professors have. What do you think about your professors? Not Bill. He's different. What do you think about... <laughs> that's a good thing, by the way, not a bad thing. Um, what do you think about them? Are you intimidated by them? A little bit. They're a little separated from you, right? They're a little above you. They may think they're a little above you. Do you think this person might think they're above you? They've sat there for a long time. What do you think they think of you? What do you think this person thinks of you walking into a classroom? How do they see you? Do they think you're smart? Do they think you're adequate? What is your perception? How do you feel that person's going to feel about you? And those of you that already know cannot answer this question. And you know who I'm talking about. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Do I? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> I'm going to start pointing. I'm just going to start picking. What do you think that person thinks about you? Yes, you do. You're a liar, 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 pants. What do you think? Would you feel comfortable going to coffee with this person? You'd be like, I want to hang with you. You're cool, because I wouldn't have. I would have been at the back of the class going, yeah, no, I'm good. So nobody's intimidated by this. Okay. No, no, this is all you know about the person. Oh, we're... Oh, I kicked the table. But if you're undergraduate and you've never been to graduate school, a little bit intimidating? Okay, okay. That's what I'm looking for because that's important. <clears throat> so, I forgot to put something up here that goes before all of these. You need a pen that writes. I can't make a dramatic anything. Here we go. I forgot this part. Change your perception at all? What if I'd started with that? Would that have changed anybody, how they saw the, everything else? Why? How would it have changed it? I really am going to introduce myself at some point and be like, then, hi, I'm standing later. <laughs> how would it have changed? What would you have thought first? Lazy. What else? That should make the pit of your stomach just hurt. Anything else? Okay, why? Um, because when I was first looking at that, it reminded me of myself, not that I have the same part of degree, but the same area. You know what you don't know? And, <laughs> well, and, and that um, I feel like I need to, to have all these things to prove my worth. To prove Overcompensate. Myself, because I'm the same thing. Perfect, perfect. <clears throat> Anybody else? Did that, anybody that this changed what they thought originally? Brave enough to say why. You are not going to hurt my feelings. Anybody? Nobody? So, so why? Why not? What do we think of a high school dropout? Bum. Okay. Why? They dropped out because they were lazy or dumb or... What an awesome segue. I'm going to introduce Amanda Hendricks real quick. Amanda Hendricks is the homeless coordinator for Bartlesville Public Schools. And she's going to be working with us. Come on up. She's, today we're going to introduce kind of a long-term plan that I would love for you guys to, to work with us on. Um, and Amanda's a huge part of that. But I want her to introduce who she is and what she does. And, and then you can address what that really means. Okay. Um, my name is Amanda Hendricks, and I, like Shannon said, work for Bottles and Public School District as an education coordinator. And 
if you're wondering um, what that is, okay. Um, then that just means I'm kind of like a social worker and I work with our students and our families at Bartlesville Public Schools who are living in homeless situations. And you might be wondering, okay, what is that homeless on the streets? Because I don't see any people on the streets. Um, but no, it does it. it the definition is broader than just being on the street. Um, the majority of our homeless families in Bartlesville are living doubled up, which means their family has moved in with another family because um, they've lost their housing or can't afford housing. We do have families in hotels and motels and then shelters, um, but the majority are doubled up. How so, many homeless families do you have? For the year, we have had 364. Um, last year, we had 460, but the year's not over yet. Right, those are just our students, and that is about four and a half percent of our student population. Can I say something about that that I learned the other night? Is that the majority of those kids have more than one sibling, mm -hmm. and they have parents, at least one, and if you really took that number up, it'd be around 1,000 to 1,200 homeless families. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. Did you say that? I nope. That no, I thank you for I sharing that. that. It's very true. And um, something that's important about Fairly Promise is that we don't have places for these people to live. That's why they're living with friends and family members, because we don't have the shelters for them. Um, so that's what I do. And the reason that ties in with high school dropouts is because a lot of our high school students who are homeless drop out of high school. And it's not because they're lazy or because they're a bum. It's because they don't know where they're sleeping at night. They don't know where their next meal is coming from, and the school is just not that important. Um, survival is most important. So when you're looking at, at kids at risk of dropping out of high school, very, very few of them are because of they're lazy. If they're not homeless, then they have so many family issues that school is just not that top, top priority. Um, I can speak for... For the Department of Human Services, Child Welfare. What? All right. I don't mind being muted. No, okay. Okay. I think it'd be funny if you got the tape and let you sing on there. Because the one thing about me is this is the first time I've ever let him film me. Because usually my story, those of you who are in um, abnormal psych will get to hear my story, and I don't let that be filmed. So this is a, a rare occasion. Um, <clears throat> I work for DHS Child Welfare in Permanency, and I know you don't know what that means, and for right now that's okay. My, the position I am most proud of and most in love with is IL coordinator. It's an independent living coordinator, which means I work with the teenagers from 16 to 18. And we have a very high percentage of our kids that do what's called aging out. And that means when they turn 18, they don't have anyone to adopt them and they don't have a family to go to. They're just out on their own. And they're a big part of this. At the beginning of this year, I started with 11 seniors, all on track to graduate. I've had four dropouts so far all of which was because they aged out and they didn't have a place to live and they bounced. They, ca they couch surfed and they ran out of places to stay. Just ran out of places. So then they had to go to Tulsa, stay in a shelter there, and they had to go to Oklahoma City and stay in the shelter there. How are you gonna go to high school? You can't, can't do it. A lot of these kids are in tech. They were on, you know, ready to uh, have their, their, you know, whether it's, maintenance or culinary school or whatever, you, you can't go to class. You may be staying two hours away, right? So, and then uh, some of my other kids, I had one drop out of, of culinary school. He came here, he came here the day after he turned 17. He uh, was considered a high school dropout because he hadn't gone to school for the year. He had dropped out of a drug and alcohol rehab center. 
he had been in, I think, 12 different shelters. And he was, he is what we call an unsuccessful teenager. And I got him. Well, I'm this new gung-ho social worker. Yes, I'm going to change the world. Yay! He's a cute kid. I love him. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. He was put in the shelter. I have a heart for the kids in the shelter. So I go pick him up, and I take him out. And so I picked him up, just fell in love with him. Sweet, oh, sweet kid. And so worked with him, worked with him, got his GED. And that was an act of God, but we got him through his GED. Several months to get that done. Got him in culinary school. Got all this stuff waived, taken care of. Got him in culinary school in January. Yes. Got him a foster home. Got him a family to adopt him. Adopt him. You'd think a foster kid's a dream, right? What do you think of foster kids? I just want a family, right? If they had a family, everything out would be all right. That's what I thought. Somebody just stood behind him. I totally believe that. And they did. That foster family would have done anything for him. We found out he was using again. He was doing bath salts. Told his foster family. They said, okay, we'll bring in counselors. We'll work with you. We'll do whatever you need to do. Cool. Found out he was still using, still having problems. Okay, now we need you to go to meetings. We need you to go celebrate recovery because we need to get to the core of what's up. He says, nope, not going to do it. What, what do you mean you're not going to do it? What do, you, what do you mean you're not going to celebrate recovery? Would anybody here give up your home and your school and everything you've put forth in college right now, walk away from it clean because there was a class you didn't want to go to? Is there anyone in this room that would do that? But it seemed like a good idea to him. Why do you think that is? This table. Why would he leave? We will stare at you till you give me an answer. Why would he leave? It doesn't have to be the right answer. Just think about it. You're a kid. How many of you have been kids? There better be a lot of hands in the air. <laughs> okay, you're 17. You're at home. Your parents just told you they want you to do something you don't want to do. Right? What do you do? I'm not doing it. You walk out, right? <laughs> How many talk back to their parents? Seriously, she's not raising her hand. Oh, okay. I'm like, I need to talk to your parents. Um, right? So you just throw a hissy fit and, you know, you come back a couple hours later. It's okay, right? Not our kids. No. Our kids say no go. What happens? They're homeless. Yep. They're her kid then. They turn 18 and they ain't got nothing. They just fell. <laughs> got nothing underneath them. Because they threw the same hissy fit every single one of us did at some point in time as a teenager. Wasn't a big deal when we did it. Well, it was a big deal when I did it, but <laughs> wasn't a big deal when most people did it, right? And this, my story, is why I latch on to these kids. Because I know this can happen. By the way, the making money part, it's a lie. <laughs> Just so you know. Pick the wrong field. <laughs> yeah. These, see, all these say, I love people, I love people, I love people, I love people, I love people. I'm never going to make more than 30000 a year. I love people, I love people. Just saying. <laughs> um, you know, you hear, you hear pastors say things like, and God takes care of me. Yeah, when you get in your upper 30s and 40s, you'll be like, and God, please take care of me because I'm taking care of your flock. Um, I wish that was a joke, but it's really not. Um, so, okay, so I said all that. Now I'm going to introduce myself. Hi, huh? I'm Shannon Fair. I am a social worker for DHS. These are all the letters behind my name. I probably forgot a few, to be honest, because I tend to do that. And I don't let people know any of this. He's sneaky and he found out. But he can also tell you how many times I admit to it, because I know. Why wouldn't I? If you had these letters, would you not be like, here's my card and my other card, and here's my pamphlet, and here's my book? 
I mean, really? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? There it is. Because I don't have this to impress you. I have this to help you. And basically what happened is the first time I went to school, I went to be a nurse because anyone can become a nurse. That's what my mom told me. A any idiot can become a nurse. You got friends. That, any, anybody in, in the nursing? Anyone? Do we have a nurse major in here? Oh, I really like it when we do. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. Not anybody can make it as a nurse. Microbiology. Telling you, not an easy field. Um, my best friend says she ran something like 300 miles on the treadmill in college because she was a nurse, and that's what kept her from killing people. <sighs> Just saying. So I went to school to be a nurse because I thought anyone could do that, and I'm really dumb. So surely e even I could do that. Not a joke. It's how I went into school. This is the field I'm going to pick because I'm too dumb to do anything else. He's tired of me talking. He's leaving. He's like, I've had enough of you. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody else do that. No one else had permission to leave. I'm taking names. Bye. <laughs> so anyway, so um, went to school, found out I loved science. <gasps> science is cool. They let you take stuff apart and you don't have to put it back together. What? You get to blow stuff up. You take frogs apart. And I, I love the human body. Love it. And I found out I could help broken people. Hmm. I mean really broken people. I mean people that fell off the sixth story of a building can't walk. I can fix broken people. What do you think that did to this little girl? I'm pretty cool. Look what I can do. There's actually something I can do. Yay! I'm not an idiot. I learned to reach in into cada cadavers and, and work certain muscles and make them smack my partner. That was fun. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Like, it's pretty fun. <laughs> but what happens to people that go to school under different motivation and my motivation was I needed to hurt. I needed to help hurt people. Because I knew I couldn't be the only person in the world that went through what I went through. And I needed to help people. And I found out here that I could. But I couldn't help them the way I wanted. And so there was a a program just starting at Vanderbilt University and they came and talked to all the pre-med and nursing students and they said we have this thing called rehabilitation sciences and it's kind of like physical therapy except we, we have a medical model and so we work with the burn patients and the cancer patients and the you know the people that no one wants to touch because they're not really going to get better okay one thing I'm going to tell you this and this and this should tell you about me is, tell me I can't do something. <laughs> Please tell me I can't. And they said, we're going to work on people that can't get better. Oh, pick me. Please pick me. I want to see if I can. Yay. So I got recruited. I was recruited, and they paid 100% for this because I was part of the pioneer class and they wanted to see if it would work. So I went and I did this. And rehab is cool, man, because they work on the whole body. Like if you, how many of you have had like knee surgery or like, you know, it's the old people, hey me. <laughs> or you had a friend, you had a sports injury, you go to therapy and they just work your ankle, they just work the thing that's injured. Guess what, that's not enough. Because if you, unless you just stepped in a hole and twisted your ankle, and that's why your ankles hurt, most knee injuries come from the whole body not functioning right. So we got to learn about the whole body. I got to learn if your hips hurting, I fix your foot and your ankle and your knee and your back and your neck and your ear. True story, I had a patient one time that was a tennis pro. 
I love this woman. And she comes in. She's been a patient of mine for a couple of years. She comes in and she says, Shannon, my shoulders hurt. I've been to the chiropractor, the physical therapist, the MD, the DO, the blah, 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 blah. And no one can fix it. Will you fix it? And my thought is, why didn't you start here? That's a big list. So we start working on the shoulder, nothing's happening. So I work a little bit lower, nothing's happening. Work a little lower, nothing's happening. Work a little lower. I am not kidding. I get to the big toe, I adjust her toe, and we all hear the shoulder go thunk back into place. That's how God taught me everything's connected. <laughs> so after this, rehab was real cool. I was learning. I was seeing miracles happen. And then I hit a wall. I hit a patient I couldn't make better. And I went, oh, no, mm -mm, that's not going to happen. No. And it was a little girl. It was a little girl, a little six-year-old girl. And I had to tell her and her mommy that she was never going to walk. See, I'm not up with that. I couldn't do it. I just flat out could not do it. I couldn't walk in that room and say, you're not going to walk. You're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. I could not do it. So I started getting on the phone and, and calling all over the world, literally, what else is out there? What, is, what else is out there to help someone that has this, this, this condition, this muscular condition? And I get a hold of someone in England. <laughs> Had a great accent. Had a lot of fun with that phone call. And they tell me about something called uh, myofascial therapy. Anybody know what connective tissue is? It's connective tissue. <laughs> It connects everything to everything. Anybody ever take a chicken leg apart and like it's got that grisly stuff that kind of, anybody? Does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Okay. That is connective tissue. And that little webby, wiry stuff goes through all the muscles, all the veins, all the vessels, everything. It goes through your whole body. So I can work through the fascial tissue and I can change your bones. I can change your organs. It's cool. So I was like, well, how do, you, how do you do that? How do I find out how to do that? And they said, well, it doesn't exist in America yet. Oh, that's the problem. So I start calling everyone in America. Hey, have you ever heard about this? Have you ever heard about this? Have you ever heard about this? I come across someone who had trained in England. Hey, I'm coming to you. You're going to train me because <laughs> I need this little girl to walk. So I did. He met me halfway. He taught me some secrets. Taught me some stuff. I went back. Little girl's walking now, by the way. She's not a little girl anymore. She's an adult. I was actually an athlete in college. Woo woo. So that leads me to these two. Because now I found out that not only can I keep people from being as sick as sick can be, I can actually make them whole. Oh, wow. Cool. I can make them. They can be healthy. Yay! So that's exciting. And that's exciting because I had a lot of stuff where I, I was in a wheelchair at 18. And I wasn't supposed to be able to walk. I had nerve damage that wasn't ever going to heal. All of these things. I won't get into the whole thing, but I've had, I had cancer twice before I was 20. So, anyway. So I'm learning this stuff, and this stuff is cool. Now here's the problem with all these letters. Once you get here and you start working with other people, you forget everybody else doesn't have all this. And you try to teach it. And they're like, uh, how did you get from A to banana? I don't understand. Because I've tried to teach a lot of people, but without the background and the history. How many of you could teach somebody how to be you? Right? Um, what are the fields in here? Most of you, anybody not psychology? Cool. What are you going to do with that? And what are you going to do with that? Rock on, you're going to be a social worker. Awesome. What are you going to do? <laughs> and what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Cool. I like that attitude because we don't ever know. We just make up stuff. What are you going to be when, I, when you grow up? I don't know. Who? Derek. What are you going to be? Yes. We rule the world. Um, are you pre-med? you have any idea what you're going to do with it? No. It's a cool field. You can plug it in anywhere. And I will tell you something about biology. 
Most people think it doesn't work in all these other fields, but it does. How many people come to me on a daily basis with those weird questions, right? You'll use it. Okay, so anyway, and because I still think I'm this, I don't see any of this. So I don't understand when I try to explain something, something kind of simple, like put this into place or put that into place, why they can't get it. Because I'm, I'm as dumb as they come and I understand. Right? And I explain that just to say be aware of your perceptions of yourself. How many people have a real high perception of yourself? <laughs> okay. How many people have a real low perception of yourself? Ladies, raise your hands. Anybody else? Brave enough to admit they have a low perception of themselves. You need to raise your hand. Supposed to. Raise your hand. Those who are going to be leaders to these other people, those who don't think highly of themselves, I really want you to raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody else? Thank you. If you no, 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 not at all. Is your hand raised or kind of? <laughs> I don't want anybody else to know. Here's why I, I bring that up. You see how hard it was to admit in front of people? The problem with not being aware of how you see yourself is if I have a low view of myself, I automatically think everyone else has a low view of me, right? So how are you going to treat those people? Are you going to come in confident? Are you going to come in thinking they expect much of you? Do you think that's a barrier? So it's real important to understand how you see yourself. I got it figured out in my 30s, guys. In my 30s. So, anyway. Okay, so here I am, blah, 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 blah. Worked, in, worked at the hospital, owned my own business. Okay. Then, I'm working on a patient one day. God sent me back to school, and God has a sense of humor, and he also knows I'm a control freak. So he says, you're going back to school, and I go, oh, it's got to be pre-med, because the next step has to be a doctor, because I'm a scientist, right? So I go back to school, and I start with Dr. Quick, and Dr. Quick's a genius, and I, he loves me, because I'm making A's, and I'm you know, blowing tests, and, and all the other students are like, we hate you. And I'm like, yay! I can, I rock this, yes! I love biology. My kids, I put my kids to sleep reading anatomy and physiology books to them. Not a joke. So, anyway, and I still put them to sleep like that, and they're 16 and 11. No, um, <laughs> thank you for getting that. Everyone else is like, what? So, anyway, um, so I'm in school, I'm rocking it, I'm loving life, and, <laughs> okay. How many of you are Christian enough to not freak out if I say, and I had a vision? Okay, so I'm not talking to you middle people that, that's freaking out. Okay, so <laughs> my sister got stuck on a Ferris wheel one day, and she's like, oh my gosh, and, my, and his hair son's like, mom, chill out, quit screaming. She says, I'm not screaming, I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> Just a little holy humor. Anyway, so I get woke up in the middle of the night. <clears throat> Very audible voice. Not the first time. Again, abnormal psych, I'll tell you my salvation story. But anyway, I was through all this before I was saved. All of this. Whew, this was all on my strength. And God has a, like I said, God has a sense of humor. And he goes, ha ha, none of that matters. Because <laughs> now you're mine. So anyway, so I woke up in the middle of the night and the voice says, you're a counselor, not a doctor. My poor husband. Honey, wake up. Jesus says I'm not a doctor. My husband says, you need a doctor. <laughs> so I go to Dr. Quick, who is a very close friend and mentor of mine. And shut up. <laughs> And so I'm like, Dr. Quick, Jesus says I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be a counselor. He goes, no, Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> he goes, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 
no, no. He says, you go ahead and finish pre-med and, and, then, and then maybe you can get your PhD, but you're not supposed to be a counselor. Counselors are bad. <laughs> okay. So then I go to physics, to Dr. Turner. How many know Dr. Turner? Love that man. My world had just been turned upside down, right? God just says, you're going to be a counselor. How many years do you suppose is behind me being a doctor? Right? Uh -huh, none of that counts. Start over. So, Dr. Turner gave me some papers back that he graded and... He didn't give me full credit, and I was having a bad day, and I walk in there, and I was like, Dr. Turner, Of course, I didn't tell him. Jesus just messed up my whole plan for my life. What's great is a couple days later, I went and told him that, and he's like, oh, I totally understand that. It's okay. You're forgiven. <laughs> cool. Jesus talks to you, too. You're nuts, too. Awesome. So, <laughs> so anyway... This is what happened. Dr. Quick was so insecure about me going into the psychology program. What happened, Professor View? He brought you over to my office. And to this day, I don't understand that. Until this day, I don't understand He brought me over. Let me explain that I was 34 years old. I wasn't 19 or 20 not knowing what was up. 34 with all that behind my name, right? Yeah, he wasn't turning me over to him unless he talked to him. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. So then, okay, so I'm taking psychology classes. It's really awesome, right? Learning all kinds of things. And the cool thing about when you're already working and you go to school is you learn something today and you use it tomorrow. And then you go back to class and you're like, class is awesome. Guess what I did? And all the other students are like, you're a nerd. Shut up. We want to leave early. 